Welcome to Politics and Right. I'm Egberto Willis, your host. Good morning, Houston. Good morning, Harris County. Good morning to the great state of Texas. And of course, good morning to the United States of America. Good morning to the entire area that our 100,000 watt transmitter gets to every nook and cranny in Northeast Texas, Southeast Texas, Southwest Louisiana, Northwest Louisiana. Folks, we have a great show for you today. It's going to be a good day because we are going to make it a good day. Irrespective of what's happening, we do have control over certain things. So what, what we have control over, let's command what we have control over. And I mean command in a democratic kind of a way. Anyhow, folks, before we get busy with the people from around the world that listens to us as well, whether it be Barcelona, Spain, whether it's be in uh, Oxford, in England, if there's a new city that came on to the fold recently, uh, you know what, folks? We we are here to get the job done. Let's go to the Los Genios in El Estudio, the geniuses in the studio. Those heinous geniuses? (laughs) <laughs> genios, 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 genios is genius in Spanish. Genios, genios. Oh, okay. Well, we we kind of took it as a heinous genius, you know. Jackie is. Oh no, no. Yeah. I'm a heathen. <laughs> uh, hey, I was just listening to Arnie Artisan on the way in. Uh, the part that I were actually able to broadcast and cut out twenty mm-hmm. set, twenty minutes early. I, and I, I don't know why it's doing that, but we are having an issue with it. We're going to try to get that fixed as soon as possible. She was making a very important point, and her, she and her guest were talking about um, one of the presidential candidates spouting his garbage about, well, we had the greatest economy. Well, you know, greatest for who? It was greatest mm-hmm. for CEOs. It was great for corporations. But your average ordinary person, it wasn't so great for her. Plus, mm-hmm. it's just, you know, you have to have, if you have a greatest economy in the world, that means everybody is prospering. That means everyone can afford a place to live. Everyone can afford an affordable car and the Affordable Health Act. So if you have the greatest economy in the world, the caveat is, for whom do you have that? So I just wanted to bring that point out this morning. Uh, and well, apologize to the PPFT listeners that we did not get a chance to carry the rest of Arnie Arneson because Arnie's darn good. Yeah, she yes, is. She She's is. great. Uh, so, there's no doubt yeah, about she, There's no doubt about that. And um, uh, anyway, we El don't want to hijack Jack. your show. Oh, no. He's got no, some words no. for us this morning. Well, if we wanted to hijack your show, we would just go ahead and play smooth jazz from Harry. <laughs> oh, not the smooth jazz after the show. Oh, anyway, what's oh, up, Jack? Okay. We'll do it after the show. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I read I read your piece this morning. You know that. Uh, so it's going to be on Social Security. Uh, the GOP mm-hmm. wants to cut Social Security. Really? More like the corporate fascists want to cut Social Security because they don't want to pay their fair share again. They don't want to pay taxes. Social Security, health care, and they are using the GOP to get it done, and they are all too willing. The GOP is all too willing to take our Social Security net away from the people on the left and on the right. Uh, it, it is a shame. You better think about that. You know, you better think yeah. about that. Seriously, when you go into that voting booth in November, I want Jack's words to echo through your head and go, do I want to vote for the party who's going to take away Social Security? You know, look, Social Security is not a fortune. The people and the recipients on Social Security are not riching it up, you know? Nope. And, of course, the corporations don't want to pay taxes. They don't want to do anything. Hell, I don't want to pay taxes either, but I have to. It's compulsory. For me and my and my income bracket, I have to pay them. I mean, they're going to come yeah. out and take my stuff. Yeah, they need That's they the need to pay, they need to pay their fair share just like everybody else and not try to welch out of it. Mm-hmm. And when a corporation reports five and six hundred percent profits, there's something seriously wrong here, folks. When we have homeless that, people wandering around because they can't afford anything. There is something wrong and it needs to be and, fixed. 
And that's what we are here for. We are here to, to let folks know that they are already empowered to fix these things. I want to give a very good morning to Melanie Keelan from Barcelona, Spain. Good morning, Melanie, and thank you for being well, I was about to say thank you for being up early with us today, but actually in Barcelona, I think it's probably either noon or one o'clock. So what can I say? Uh, uh, Melanie Keelan is, uh, is a wonderful person uh, that had moved out to Spain, and that's where she lives now. Anyhow, today is Thursday. If today is Thursday, let me see if I can remember what it means. Oh! It actually means that the one and only founder of the Houston Democracy Project, Neil Aquino, is in the house. Good morning, Neil. How are you doing this morning? We are going to have a great show. Let me tell you what the show uh, is titled today. The show is titled today, GOP Budget Proposal Cut Social Security, AOC Exposed to GOP, U.S. United States Citizens Are Not Happy, Neil Aquino Visit. So don't buy the rhetoric as the GOP proposals cut Social Security. They do. And when they tell you we're trying to scare you, no, they do. And Obamacare, they do. And the reason they do, oh, Neil, somebody says, oh, I can't hear Neil. So we're going to have to fix, that's on the internet that they can't hear you. So we have to figure out why aren't they hearing the one and only Neil Aquino. We got to definitely fix that. But anyhow, folks, uh, they'll tell you, we, no, 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 we are not cutting Social Security is what they tell you. I don't want you to, I want you to not just sit back and believe me. What I want you to do is believe what they've actually written. Right, Neil? That's, that's, I'll tell you, they have, that it was, it was a hundred and what I read yesterday, 170 Republican House members put out a budget. It was the same old stuff. Cuts to. But, you know, it, it is something that we are going to take care of. But anyway, folks, welcome aboard. Welcome aboard. Um, uh, the other thing is, you know, every every year we get something called the happiness report. And the United States was always rated in the, in the, within the top 20, not very high in the top 20, but in the top 20. The Scandinavian countries have always been the ones that have been very happy because they have great uh, social infrastructure programs. Uh, you know, uh, they're really family oriented. They make sure that families have things like family leave and so forth. Things that are anathema to a, 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 a country that is mostly based on the the what what should i say the dryness of capitalism you know capitalism has no soul now we have the nordic countries like sweden and finland and and norway that actually they're great free enterprise countries freedom reigns but they also remember that humanity comes first humanity comes first so uh that that is how it goes lizard queen is in the house eric hayes is in the house I still don't quite know why they don't hear Neil Aquino. I think they can hear me, but they can't hear you. We'll try to figure that out as we go along with the show. But anyhow, Neil, uh, before we get into national politics, I want to cover a few of the local issues. You wrote three important blogs, and I'd like to start out with the blog uh, about Harris County. And the uh, uh, So tell us a little bit about that. And then uh, with our mayor and transparency, which I think is pretty damn important. Yes.
just succinctly from the Chronicle, um, uh, their decade, their budgets have grown over the last decade by 70%, uh, collect 236 million a year in funding and an additional $74 million from contract patrols um, in neighborhood fees. Um, then an additional 24 million in county subsidies. But county de uh, deputy constables rarely fight serious crime um, to handle a disproportionately lower amount of calls for major and violent property crimes such as small assault, domestic violence, theft, burglary. Um, so the sheriff and HPD get a larger share. Now that that's important stuff. Um, oh, and meanwhile, each precinct logged thousands of check-in and meet the citizen visits with residents and local businesses. Precincts spend 80 to 85 percent of their time dealing with non-criminal calls. Now that's important stuff, but that's not exact. That's not usually what I talk about. With my, I talk about issues related to democracy. And what I write about is I encourage folks to read the series. One thing that occurs to me is that these constables are ready-made to execute Trump's planned migrant roundups and migrant camps, and also use his, implement his use of the Insurrection Act and other planned, openly planned attacks on civil liberty. Um, and, and something I've been thinking about lately, that attacks on freedom, authoritarianism will require a large local infrastructure to carry out. Um, three of the eight elected constables are Republicans. None of them have disputed Trump's talk of uh, immigrants as vermin or about bloodbaths. We know that local law enforcement unions often support election deniers and insurrectionists. Um, so um, I just wanted to make the point, and I wanted just to get people thinking about, and this really connects to another post I made over, over the week, that the migrant camps, the roundups, there's SB4 to begin with. We, can, we, could, we could spend the whole show talking about SB4. But the migrant camps and the roundups will require a local infrastructure. We know that there are politicians who support it. We know that there are law enforcement unions who seem entirely comfortable with it. Um, and so we, have, we, we don't wait for elected officials or a court to rescue us. You see the courts are not going to rescue us. We need to advocate for our own freedom and safety while we can. And we need to ask tough questions of people in power about who will provide the local infrastructure for authoritarianism. Those folks, folks won't just put themselves in the camps by themselves, you know. Um, someone's gonna have to get them there. Someone's gonna have to arrest them. Some, so, and and these, these are the conversations that we need to be having with ourselves and in our households and with our elected officials from the municipal level on up. Now you pointed out in one of the blogs that you wrote at Houston Democracy Project, uh, you pointed out that, uh, that there's some transparency issues within the mayor's office and and there's an interesting uh piece that you that that you spoke about and actually there are two pieces that i want to talk about one specifically okay. is there is a reporter that went ahead and there was i guess a palestinian protest outside uh the the office and because a particular reporter went ahead and talked to that group they were denied entry into the mayor's press conference is that correct well, no, what, what it was, there was a, um, the mayor attended, this got, um, this has this got some focus over the week. The mayor attended uh, an Iftar, a Ramadan um, event, and it, there were many boycotts of the event. Um, this is an annual event. I think this was the 25th year that they had done it. Mayor Whitmire attended. There had been boycotts of it because of the war on Ga in Gaza, uh, and the war in Gaza is a, is a big subject itself. Um, but the the mayor there were and there were protests inside the event so the palestinian protesters and i've i've seen them many people have seen them they were at the houston lgbt uh political caucus uh, nominating event a few months ago they were at the meyerland democrats meeting they've been at many different things and they've been outside um folks were protesting they were kicked out okay you know that's how it rolls and then the reporter uh, uh mr romero who's the latino communities yeah, Chronicle Latino Communities reporter um, went out to the parking lot to follow them, and the police threatened him with arrest. Um, he followed the protesters out, and the police threatened him with arrest um, for talking to the protesters. So he he never was able even really to cover uh, the ceremony. And, you know, we, we need to hope that this isn't the tone. John Whitmire, if you listen to John Whitmire, transparency transparency that's all he ever he, he if you had a buck for every time he used the word 
you'd have you'd have a lot of money. Well, I, I, I want to interrupt you there. Let me tell you why. Because th th that's the magic. That's the MAGA magic. In other yes. words, and even when we start talking about Social Security, you're going to see what I'm saying. Uh, they went ahead and they said, we are transparent. We're transparent at the same time that they're being not transparent. In other words, they, they're saying the words, but they're acting differently. Here is the interesting thing. You wrote another blog with a message, with, with, a, with, a, with an uh, excerpt from uh, the Houston landing that kind of shocked me. Let's hear a little bit about that. Right. right. So this this was in this was in a, this post overall was called Whitmire's transparency is threatening the press and hiding data. So we've talked on this show before. Um, and then the thing we just talked about with the constables, the constables would not give the public data they were supposed to 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 the reporter, including Democrat Sylvia Trevino. Um, so the, we've heard about we talked about the Houston Avenue, Houston Avenue project. So really succinctly, the Houston Avenue project. At the last months of the mayor Turner's administration, some medians were put in um, and some traffic slowing, traffic calming, they call it. Uh, there weren't even really big dedicated bike lanes. They, they just, although there should have been that too, but they put in these medians and a local church, uh, Trinity Presbyterian and the car dealership that's there, they were all kicking up a fit. And, and so were the police and fire unions. Not, not the police and fire departments, it seems, but the unions who, who will tell you they're not political actors and their members are beyond questioning because they're safety, but then they get involved in, then they get uh, involved in our politics. So Mayor Whitmire came in as one of his first acts because uh, he'd been speaking to the church, speaking to the car dealership, ripped up the work that had just been done, right? That We're we spent told... tens, of thousands of, tens of thousands of dollars to put in a, oh. few, week, a few months ago. Right, it cost a hundred and something thousand to to put in just a few months ago, and they hit a gas main and a water main separately during this work. It, this has cost seven or eight hundred thousand dollars the rip up, and and there's no transparency about where the money's come from. There wasn't any council appropriation of this money. Um, he just came up with the money. So the Houston Landing and, and credit and, and Houston Landing, Houston Chronicle, local journalism matters. Sometimes people get frustrated with their editorial stances at the Chronicle. Local journalism matters. The Landing submitted a Texas Public Information Act request for data studies plans related to the installation and removal of the median. In response, this is from the Landing, the city sent a letter to the Texas Attorney General's office, right? So here's our Democratic mayor. John Whitmire, he, he told you over and over during the election, oh no, I'm a good Democrat. So he's writing a letter to Ken Paxton uh, asking if he had to give the information. The city said that the requested information includes discussions among city employees and traffic routes at risk for congestion or co collisions. Using that information, terrorists could plan an attack that could tra target travelers, first responders and public transit. So they won't give the data. Now you could go outside, you could look at Transstar. You could just, you could sit home and look at Transstar and know if it's busy or not. And you, you know from your own commute what's busy or not. Or you could drive around and say, oh, is it? So the city, and what, and what I wondered, I don't know, does the Whitmire team think it's funny? The mayor has termed folks who are tired of the red light running, folks who want bike lanes, and if you drive, you know that the red light running and the aggressive driving is an issue all over the, all over the region. He's termed them anti-car activists, right? That's the term. And this, this, is, this is part, I, I watch the British House of Commons, the question time every, every week um, for the prime minister. And there was a guy over in England last, uh, last week complaining about anti-car, who's saying attacks on cars. This has become a global right wing or an international right wing thing. Um, and whether it's the fossil fuel and well, I don't know where all this is coming it's actually, from. No, no, it's actually, no, it's, it, it's coming from the fossil fuel. They're brainwashing people into thinking electric cars are bad because, again, the fossil industry understands that uh, any mass, uh, be, when we get a whole bunch of electric cars, that is the death knell for a large percentage of the uh, petroleum industry. I mean, the petroleum industry will remain. We still need grease. We still need a whole lot of products and medicines and fertilizers that are made from petroleum to this day. Day, and not that we should, but that's for this day. Now, I want to I want to piggy off of that because I, I want to take this local issue 
a, from a, into a national perspective uh, in that we have these people that have labels. You know, uh, Mayor Whitmer calls himself a Democrat, yet – uh, oh. and, and, and notice there are a lot of Democrats around the country, what they like to call themselves. I think it's, uh, uh, I forgot, Blue Dog Democrats, I think is what they call themselves, right. is uh, what they do is they, they have the label Democrat, which is supposed to mean in our time, a progressive type person, but they use right wing tactics. Look at the mm -hmm. message that you sent me from the right Houston land in. Right. Look at the right wing land in. The right wing land in said that he submitted the request to the indicted thug that we have for an attorney general to, to right. give a ruling on. But it's not only that he went to the, our right-wing thug attorney general, but he also used right-wing talking points. Oh, my God! Uh, we don't want to give them the papers as to where the money came from to, to tear up this media and our, why, or the traffic patterns because – Terrorism, terrorism. Right. So that's all right. they have to shoot out there. The word terrorism, the same kind of trolls that the right wing uses. So we have to be cognizant of these issues. The other thing is uh, the mayor comes in, in a, in a popular area, more affluent area. He goes ahead and he spends over eight, you said it's over $800,000 to dig up uh, something that was built uh, a few months ago. But here's the deal. If you go into South Park, if you go into Studi Wood, if you go into all these areas of, of Houston, they are neglected with their potholes. They're neglected with the drainage that overflow. They're neglected with all these things that the city could right. pay for with that million, near million dollars that they did to just clean up that median. But they are willing to put the money and get it without funding in the median. The other thing that comes up with that, uh, and I heard this uh, from one of the council women uh, on the thing, you know, the, the firemen just got a new contract that paid them a whole lot of money. OK. Yeah. And uh, uh, by the way, I do believe that, uh, you know, the, the police officers shouldn't be making more than fire officers should be making more than a lot of the people that do good safety work for the community. They should be all on par. Right. But. These different groups that have political power, and this goes for all cities around the world, they get special treatment. So this councilwoman says, yes, we need the, we need the fire personnel who do that hard work in, in, in saving lives as they put out fires. But guess what? We have a lot of people in different departments in the city that goes out during the hurricane, that goes out during problems, and save lives too. We don't see any money in the budget for them. You say. So you're, you're talking. So um, I have been um, watching council um, as I, as I go about my day and I, over the, over the week, I will watch that there's a public, there's a public comment section. You can go and talk to city hall. That's on Tuesdays. And then they do an agenda meeting on Wednesdays where there's no public, um, no, no direct public input. The councilwoman I'm, um, you're referencing is Tiffany Thomas, who I believe is district right. F out a leave. And she rep she represents represents a very diverse district. So yesterday there was a and this gets back to transparency because one of the concerns that Councilwoman Thomas had and other members of council, uh, Mr. Paul uh, Ed Pollard um, and Pollard and Thomas have written a letter a, a, a really good detailed letter asking questions about the firefighters contract. The, the contract was done without any involvement. Mayor uh, Councilwoman Thomas was saying how. Um, leaked drafts of the of the of the contract had been going on since March third, but it, the first public discussion involving council members was only yesterday. Um, right. So Councilwoman Thomas is saying the garbage workers uh, uh, um, and and park workers and all that need to get money, need to have access to good wages and raises. The firefighters. It's a six hundred and fifty million dollar contract plus. There were different accruals of interest over over the payment of the bonds, and that 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 depends on fluctuating interest rates. They're getting this money. Um, they they're an AFL CIO union. The, the, if you remember, all of the unions, with the exception of the teachers' union, supported Whitmire over Sheila Jackson Lee. Hope the, the municipal employees' union. It's not, but Mayor Whitmire is asking for 5% reductions across departments other than police and fire. So the Gulf Coast AFL-CIO really needs to stand up for the other workers 
And, and, and also the firefighters are perfectly comfortable, as is the police union, uh, bringing these back to democracy issues with endorsing Republicans who are talking about overturning our ballot. So we'll, we're giving 50 percent of our city budget in the last. And, and then just to complete talking about council yesterday, there was a three and a half million dollar tax abatement for child care. This was about a seven or eight minute debate or 10 minute debate. Three and a half million abate tax abatement um, for child care in the city. There were four Republican no votes. There were four Republican no votes. Uh, your council member, uh, what's his name? Flickinger out in Kingwood. Yeah. Uh, Violet right. Carter, who, who when she was running, oh no, I work for the Astros Foundation. I'm, I'm moderate. No, nope. she votes against the three. And then council member uh, Ramirez and council member Huffman, who defeated Tony Busby. I bet Tony Busby would have voted for um, and she mm -hmm. represents River Oaks. And Mayor Whitmire said during that debate, um, Councilwoman Thomas and Cayman were, were, did good, good work pushing it. And Mayor Whitmire said like 10 times during this damn debate, oh, we're, we're broke, we're broke. I know this is a great goal, Councilwoman Cayman. We're broke, we're broke. But at the same time, the firefighters and the police are getting half the city budget and there is no there is no funding mechanism for this um, firefighters contract. They're talking and about tax it, it, it is, Yeah, it is sad. It is something we got to uh, look into as far as equity. Uh, equity. There are certain employees that they treat better than others. And what's yes. interesting is demographically, these employees look very different. And that is yes. sad. Demographically, they look very different. Now, let's go ahead and uh, before I go to Bard, I want to say one one other thing, and that is, it is important for us to learn these things. It's not only local, but this happens all over. And having somebody like you watching what's going on on the city level, on the county level, it's important and it gives the impetus for others around the country to actually see these are things that must be done. It's local, baby. It's local. It, it local grows into quite a bit more. Let me take Bard. Uh, Neil, I know you have some more to say, but let's bring Bard into the oh, conversation. Uh, let's hear the good call. afternoon, brother. Uh, good morning, brother Bard. How are you doing? Good morning, sir. Thank you for having me. Um, yes, sir. Talk to me. City, the city has dismissed over a quarter million cases of rape and sexual assault and all kinds of crimes. Mm -hmm. you're, you're right to talk to me about a, a bicycle lane neil i don't care about a bicycle lane or a crosswalk who cares mayor whitmire has been there for eight or ten weeks you can't throw this on him throw it on your buddy sylvester well go ahead neil well, i don't think sylvester ever saw me as his buddy but um i can speak to that at two levels so there's two hundred and sixty four thousand cases, although it doesn't seem to involve 264,000 specific incidents. There were, in some cases, multiple filings for the same incident. First of all, that involved, according to Chief Finner himself, police not following the rules. They weren't supposed to use that code. They broke the rules consistently. The police officers, it appears, and Mayor Whitmire has appointed a six-member commission. Now, the, the Chronicle has called for the FBI or the Texas Rangers. I, I know the Texas Rangers. I know. The Chronicle has called for an external investigation. Mayor Whitmire is doing an internal investigation. The chairwoman of the investigation is the former councilwoman and state representative, Ellen Cohen. And then there are five other folks. There have been some questions about whether that group has sufficient autonomy. So that's, the police were breaking the rules. You, 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 we don't know why they didn't investigate. Secondly, um, um, on, on the crosswalks, Somehow we have constructed a concept of public safety that doesn't involve road safety. For most Houstonians, your daily encounter with lawlessness is the endless, dangerous, red light running and aggressive driving that's killing and maiming people across the city and county. How on earth have we, con have we constructed public notions of public safety and ideas of public safety that don't involve people driving around in multi-ton vehicles, whacking into each other all the time. That is public safety. Road, public safety is traffic safety. 
You know, uh, what, what happens, Bart, is a, a lot of times is uh, we, we have been taught to take our eye off the ball. Uh, when you come and you say, hey, look at these 200 and something cases, you're absolutely right. And at what and whose fault is that? No matter how you look at it, it's the police department uh, pretty much run by the police union that think they are autonomous and can do as they please. So, no, they have it coming to them. And you are correct to be concerned about that. Unfortunately, when the results come out, you're going to see that it's that same autonomous police department that we give too much damn power to that that actually decided that some people weren't worth investigating. So, Bard, what's interesting is as you made that statement there, you're going to notice that it's the same people that many people like to defend that are the ones who uh, got too big for their britches and decided who's who is a waste of time to go prosecute. Continue, my brother, Bard. Oh, this is the first time that I've agreed with Neil all day. I agree. Let's get the Texas Rangers in here. Let's get rid of this chief Finner. I don't care a bit about him. He's he's it's he's the man on the watch thing. Get him out of there. Let's let's investigate. But him it, in, interestingly, interestingly, you feel the same way about him that the union feels about him. And interestingly, even as the union likely feels that way about him, the people who screwed up are the people who have the air of the unions is for the likely the union folks that decided to do this board. Mm -hmm. So again, be careful, be careful of how you think things look. The reason the union wants to get rid of Finner right now is because he wants to be a part of this investigation as well. That's saying, I want to know who I'm going to fire. And that's why the union is involved and in saying, get him out of here, get him out of here, because they want to know who should we fire right. next. Be careful what you're asking for, Bard. Anyway, Bard, let's. I got to continue with some social security. I know a lot of folks want to hear what I've got to say about social security. So give me a quick five seconds, and then we got to get you out of here, my brother. Yeah, typical city. Kick the can down the road, pass the buck. It's time for Whitmire to step up, fire this guy, get his own chief. Let's go. Let's start with a clean slate. We got a lot of a lot of messes left by Sylvester Turner that we got to investigate and. And that, this guy needs to come up on charges himself. So. I am going to have to ask you to uh, to go ahead and reevaluate what you're saying. And by, by the way, I'm no fan of any of our mayors. I'm no fan of the union right. at all. All yeah. right. So, I mean, I'm not a stooge for these folks at all. Uh, you know, I, I met all of them in person, talked to all of them in person. I'm no fan of them because they're all a part of the machine. Yes, Sylvester right. is on one part of the machine and Whitmer is another part of the machine. Both of them, we, it's, we may want to call it democratic. It's not a democratic machine they're part of. It's a part of the machine. Okay, Bart? Right. So you and I shouldn't sit back I'm here. We agree. We agree. Uh, but let me finish, Bard. You and I should not be I sitting down that. here uh, disagreeing on anything. We need to be on the same team, what's there for people. And that's what I'm trying to get my right wingers, you, uh, to figure out right now that we are actually on the same team, brother. You we get that? All right, let's go and stop trying to turn Thank against me. All right, take care, brother. We'll talk later. All right, folks, I want to... I, I want to um, all right. I tell you what, the, the first thing I no, I'm not going to play the happiness piece and I'm not going to play the AOC piece because since the video and all of that is in the newsletter, go check it out there. Let's actually talk things that you guys have necessarily can call in for. Again, the number is 713-526-5738. Again, that number is 713-526-5738. You can actually read the rest of the program on, on the videos that we have, that we created for you, etc. at politicsandright.com slash newsletter, politicsandright.com slash newsletter. And, and uh, all the, the, the four items we are intent of discussing are there, including the, uh, the link to the Houston Democracy Project with all the blogs that uh, brother uh, Neil Aquino, Aquino, he's going to knock me out the next time I say Aquino, uh, Aquino, right. Aquino, yeah. Aquino. Yeah. Aquino. I'm, look, yeah. I'm Latino, man. We say a Q U I is Aquino. You had to uh, teach me that your pronunciation is Aquino. So it's Aquino. And Tom right. Aquinas telling you it's Aquino. That, that's where it comes uh, yeah. from. I listen to whoever, whatever the hell you want to call yourself, brother. That is what it is. 
<laughs> anyway, folks, I want to talk about the budget proposal shows the GOP is a party of cutting Social Security and Medicare. Um, I, I, I want to read a part of this article because here's the thing that I want to show you. Remember earlier we spoke about uh, Whitmer saying, I'm transparent, I'm transparent, even yeah. as he's writing to the attorney generals to say, no, we're not sending you this stuff. We're not going to be transparent. And Attorney General, the crook of Texas, we want permission from you to not be transparent. Check this out. Defenders of Social Security and Medicare on Wednesday swiftly criticized the biggest caucus of Republicans in the U.S. House of Representatives for putting out a budget proposal for fiscal year 2025 that takes aim at crucial programs. Listen up, folks who are going to the ballot box. First of all, if you're going to be on Social Security, if you're close to Social Security, if you're going to be on Medicare, don't be bluffed. Don't be fooled. Don't vote against your interest. Check it out. The 180-page Fiscal Sanity to Save America plan from the Republican Study Committee follows the release of proposal from Democratic President Joe Biden, uh, Democratic President Joe Biden and U.S. House of Representative uh, Committee Chair Jody Arrington, uh, Republican of Texas, who is leading the fight to create a fiscal commission for the programs that critics call a death panel designed to force through cuts. The RSC document features full sections on Guess what the title is? The full sections on saving Medicare and preventing Biden, Biden's cuts to Social Security. This is the greatest lie possible. Here, uh, the title in their Republican document says, uh, saving Medicare and preventing Biden's cut to Social Security. So they give it that name as they intend to cut. They think you are stupid, but you have politics done right, and you have other folks that are there reading between the lines for you. We don't read the titles of what the lines say. We read what's underneath the lines, okay? Which both push back on the president's recent comments calling out Republican attacks on programs that serve seniors. All they do is rhetoric. They don't do anything for you. Their programs that's generated from the Heritage Foundation does nothing mm -hmm. for you. Continuing, the caucus plan promotes premium support for Medicare Advantage, which, as we've spoken before, is a ripoff. It's a way of stealing money. Private companies steal money from you. Plans administered by private health insurance providers, as well as changes to payments made to hosp teaching hospitals. For Social Security, the proposals calls for, hear this, trying retirement age, time retirement age to rise in life expectancy and cutting benefits for younger workers over certain income levels, including phasing out auxiliary benefits. Remember, all of this falls under the title of what again? Saving Medicare and preventing Biden's tax cut to Social Security. And what do they put underneath that? Hey, guys, we're cutting Social Security. We're cutting all these guys. The document also claims that the caucus budget would promote trust fund solvency by increasing payroll tax revenues from the pro-growth tax reform, pro-growth energy policies that lifts wages, work requirements that move Americans from welfare to work, and regulatory reforms that increase economic growth. I like how they like to say, move Americans from welfare to work. There is a systemic portion of America that believes in welfare, okay? There are a systemic amount of people all over this country, a very small amount, that their life, you know, the lifestyle that they know about is welfare. I, I understand that, people. But if you go into any neighborhood in Houston, poor, rich, whatever the demographics, you find the bus stops are full of people. You find people out there going to work. Don't buy into this crap that we are a welfare state, that everybody wants welfare and they want to take, 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 take. The people who take most are the wealthy people, the people who run Medicare Advantage that gets $1,700 a, a year from every single one of you who takes the Medicare Advantage plan, they get that money for doing what again? Nothing. Do you call them welfare recipients? I do. I do. We have to start smartening up for us all. We have to start being smart for us 
all. In a lengthy Wednesday statement blasting the RSC budget, Social Security Works President Nancy Altman, which we've had on the show before, pointed out that last week, former President Donald Trump, the presumptive Republican nominee to face Biden in November, told CNBC that there is a lot that we can cut in Social Security. Who said that? Right wing brother. No, he's not right wing. He's right wing brother Trump. He came out and he said it. And people, he's going to try to, his people are going to try to walk it back some, but that's what he said. You know why he said that? In order for him to give the big tax cut that he wants to give, he has to cut these programs. He has to cut these programs based on how we bill for taxes and everything else. Don't be fooled. We are informing you. You can choose to read up on what we're talking about to make sure to make sure that we're we're not pulling something over your head like they are. Remember what they titled this segment. They titled this "Getting Rid of Biden's t- Social Security Cuts," which ain't which aren't there. Medicare cuts, which aren't there. You know what they call a Medicare cut for for Biden? Biden decided to negotiate for drugs so that your drugs would be cheaper. And when if your drugs are cheaper, it means Medicare spends less on your drugs, right? In other words, the corporations don't get your tax dollars. The Republicans call that cutting Medicare. <laughs> they call get it, making a deal to get the prices for your drugs at a cheaper rate. Because it then because they have saved the government money by not donating money to a a drug manufacturer who drug, whose drugs you help pay for when it was in, in, in being designed and they're still gulping your money again, he right. said to them, no, 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 no. It's not going to happen. I'm coming to you in a second, Neil. I just want to finish this quick segment. So, folks, wake up. Don't be fooled. So, uh, congressional Republicans are conforming, confirming that parties support for the cuts to the tune of $1.5 trillion. Again, the con- congressional Republicans are confirming the party's cut to a $1.5 trillion. They are also laying out some of those cuts, Altman said. This budget would raise the retirement age in line with prominent Republican influencer Ben Shapiro's recent comments that retirement in itself is a stupid idea. It would make annual cost of living increases stingier so that benefits erode over time. It would slash middle class benefits, perhaps most insultingly, given the Republicans claim to the party of family values. This budget would eliminate uh, Social Security spousal benefits as well as children's benefits for middle class families. That would punish women who take time out of workforce to care for children and other loved ones. She continued, this coming from a party that wants to take away women's right. This is written, folks. You can actually look it up. They put titles on because they don't expect you to read the rest. And the only way they can give away your money to the wealthy is by cutting your what money you have earned. Uh, before I go to Joni, I want to give Neil a quick chance. I, I still have more to talk about this, but Neil, I want you to interject so that I'm not just monopolizing your time. Oh, no, no, no. I'm sorry. No, no, I didn't feel that way. Um, I was I was actually just saying, right, right, like I was agreeing with you. But I'll, I'll just say two quick things. That Social Security benefits for children. I had a close family member who lost uh, her husband um, with, with young children. And those Social Security benefits that so kick, kicked in at that point, and that was super important. Uh, and these things matter. Secondly, you mentioned the Heritage Foundation, and, and I, that just made me think. Um, the Heritage Foundation, this is a New York Times of January 21st this year. Heritage Foundation recently hosted an event in Washington for allies of Viktor Orban, the Prime Minister of Hungary. So just, just to give you a sense of where all this stuff is, all this stuff is coming from, um, these these are the groups trying to cut your Social Security, the the authoritarian model for the Republicans. Orban. Yeah. Before I jump to Joni, the RSC budget would also take away Medicare's new power to negotiate lower prices on prescription drugs. That is a gift to the drug companies. Let's pay Republicans and neoliberals so that they don't take away the money from us, even though 
we were the one we the people the taxpayer are the ones who develop most of these drugs in recent days trump has been trying to walk back his 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 claim that he doesn't want to cut social security but it is written let's go to joni come on joni how are you doing this morning ma'am Good morning, Egberto. Um, just the Social Security. My husband's um, almost uh, to the age of receiving, so we've been really paying attention and, um, you know, wanting to make the right decisions for ourselves. Well, uh, you know, the the corporations, it's clear if anybody's thinking and, and watching that corporate America is salivating to get their hands on what's now going into Social Security and Medicare. These are uh, to me, they're, they're they're sacred programs that if you believe in your own country and taking care, like j- welfare has become a bad word, but it's in our preamble, you know, promote the general welfare, and they've turned it into a um, a bad word. Uh, but it's it's partly, you know, uh, compensation for having been lived a productive life and paid into Social Security. Um, and so I've, I went to a meeting recently at uh, where I work, and there was it's a benefits meeting. It happens every year, um, and the the representative who represents a 403b. I, I don't know why um, organizations aren't forced to pay into Social Security, and they even have any options at all um, in, a, in in our society. I don't think they should when they do business here. But anyway, um, I, t- I went to that meeting, and the the man said. Basically, he hit Social Security, said it's a Ponzi scheme. And I, I countered with, with that. I said, you know, w- w- and I asked him, w- wasn't there a time when we all had to pay into it so that it was solvent? Because he was talking about how it's going to be insolvent. It's a Ponzi scheme. It's it's a ripoff for people. Um, and I, you know, I, I tried to, to give my point of view, but it wasn't my show. So, um, but anyway, I'm just, I'm, I'm thank you for, for bringing it to light. It's more of the reverse attribution that the corporations are doing in order to get their hands on money that should go in for all all of us and all the citizenry of our country to benefit from. So thank you again. And thank you, Neil. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for that. Let's go to Harry. I, I want to respond to some of what you said, Joni, but I'm going to go to Harry and then I'll, I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about this. Go ahead, uh, Harry. Go, hi, good morning, my brother. Talk to me. Good morning to the two geniuses talking about this with the GOP, uh, wanting to cut Social Security and Medicare. Good morning to Neil Aquino, and good morning to you, Professor Willis. Now, I'll just say this. I talked about this before with Social Security. This is what I talked about with Ted Koppel, that I, uh, and you, you laughed when I talked that day um, about paying into Social Security. Well, Iberto, you, Neil Aquino, Jack, and Howard are all wait a minute. We are all wait a minute. You know, like that wait a minute that was talking about, uh, you are not going to uh, not pay for my Social Security and my Medicare. Tell me what you're not going to pay for. That's why we're going to go to these polls and stop Donald Trump from getting in there. And we are also going to vote out those GOP people who uh, want to cut Social Security and vote in more progressives. And God rest. Um, the late, great Marvin Gaye, and thank you, Howard and Jack, for playing that before politics done right. Make me uh, start it. Uh, make me want to holler, throw up both my hands. Okay, Harry, Harry, Harry. Thank you for all of that. I've, I, with, with, I, I, with great, with great love. I must throw you off because I want to get a little bit more of Social Security in. But you know, we uh, love you to death. We love uh, your Howard, vibrancy and everything else. Okay. Good. I'll Peace. Prayer for you and your family, Keep- I love you, brother. Thank you so kindly. I love you, brother. I love you, brother. Um, Joni said something important. The way the GOP and neoliberals work is the fo- following, or the following. They malign something. They make something look like it's bad, whether bad or not. They make it look like it's bad. Because if they make it look like it's bad, the low in what they consider low information, the low information portion of our citizenry, which isn't necessarily low information by choice. I want to qualify that. They don't read in between the lines and they just go and do what their trusted representatives tell them to do, or they believe what their trusted representatives do. And one of the things in the work that we do here, both myself, Neil, and others, What we are trying to do is develop that trust with you, the listener, the people who work with us, et cetera, 
because we understand that in a community where we are all overworked, where we have to work so far, so hard for dwindling pay in the aggregate under Biden. Yes, pay have been going up faster than inflation, but still we have yet to recover from the losses we've taken since the 1980s. So people are working much harder. People don't have the time to do much research on their own. People don't have the time to get through all the programmatic indoctrination that is created from the epochs of the world and the OANs of the world and the news maxes of the world. You know, those things are well-produced shows from heritage founda- with Heritage Foundation's money to mislead you, to misinform you, to have good people vote against your own interest. When I talk to you about Social Security and Medicare and Medicare Advantage and all of that, do I have skin in the game? Yeah, I have skin in the game because I'm an American citizen who at some time hope to retire. I probably never will, but, but I have skin in the game. And it's, it, we are not an island. It cannot be that Neil knows this stuff, Howard knows this stuff, Jack knows this stuff. I know this stuff. Joni knows this stuff. While most people, let's say they uh, they don't they don't get it, right? I'm just uh, this is hypothetical kind of stuff here. It is imperative that we learn who the culprits are in our society that's affecting our own personal economies, that's affecting our own well-being. And you can put your head in the sand, and you can follow ideological your ideological stance. I am a conservative. I'm a liberal. I'm a Democrat. I'm going to just toe the line. That is what gives us the government that we have right now. If you've heard my show yesterday and the day before, I have no quirms calling out anybody from any party. And when I have to make a compromise decision in my voting, like I will in December, I will. I've told you guys who I'm voting for and why, not because I like the person, but because I'm following what's best for our own personal economy, given the choices. It's a pragmatic decision based on facts. And what we try to tell folks out there, whether you're Republican, Democrat, or whatever, don't vote your label. Vote your interest. Nobody's asking a Republican to change into a Democrat. Nobody's asking a Democrat to change into a Republican. Nobody's asking an independent to change what their stances are. You know what we're asking of everybody? Because by doing that, you help everybody to make a vote for your interest. Because your interest is my interest. Neil's interest is my interest. Bard's interest is my interest. Brian's interest, I'm notice I'm calling my conservatives now. Brian interest is my interest. Eric Hayes, my conservative nemesis on the chat right now, is my interest. And Neil, and and hey, so I, I hope my wife comes home from uh, the hospital today. If she does, let's do coffee. Eric Hayes, my right wing nemesis, we'll do coffee this weekend if that happens. Eric, uh, Eric, and I has a coffee date that is yet unfulfilled. So, um, so let let's remember that. But anyway. I've spoken enough. I want to give Neil a minute or so to comment on this if he has something to add. No, I think you and um, and Joni and every, everyone said it well. And I, I just, but it did, just just made me think. Um, um, unrelated but connected, still, um, we've seen in the Texas primaries, uh, Greg Abbott has successfully um, gotten rid of a number of Republicans who were opposing the school vouchers. Um, so just speaking about self-interest, so we're now set to have many of our rural friends in Texas vote for a school voucher plan that's going to gut their own public schools. They knew, they knew enough they didn't want that. It's the same kind of thing. And, and, and they have gotten angry about book bans and, and wokeness. And they're, they're going to gut their own schools. Neil, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but you're right. They, uh, 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 the the uh, governor got a lot of the people who voted against voucher doing what their constituents want out. But you know what? We're going to still win that battle. Come on in, Joe. Come on in. We don't have much time, but I want to hear from Joe. Brother Joe, talk to me. We only got about a minute for you, Brother Joe. 
I, I tell you what, I, I really like the way you said uh, GOP and neoliberals, right? Because those those are the guys to call out, right? I took heart the other day when um, on a couple of votes where um, MAGA Republicans and you know the so-called um, you know uh, progressive progressives stuck it out and voted in the minority, but they voted together, right? Where their interests aligned, right? And 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 I I was really happy to see that. I think it was the TikTok vote or something like that where the it was a the TikTok vote. it was a TikTok vote, yeah. And and I, I love seeing that stuff because in a lot of places our, our interests do align. Um, so, but but remember this, you know, because the the, the size, the, the sheer size of the federal government, and the fact that it, it hasn't been able to pay for itself my whole life, you know, it's the size of the federal government's going to have to come down. And for any time you talk about cutting anything, there's going to be somebody to to go up on that hill and just like you did, just freaking just freaking you know be ready to die on that hill you know and and let me ask you but you you know what joe joe i i I need to interrupt you because i don't have a lot of time but i just want you to to think on something and then call me back on it uh, another day because we're running out of time but i want you to look at our defense budget and you know we our defense budget is larger than the next 10 uh defense budgets yesterday on tv i heard a guy said you know europe's defense budget is 356 all of Europe, all the countries in New York, $356 billion, and ours is $800 billion. We pay $500 for a bomb, a bomb that costs $500, we pay $18,000 for. I just want you to see the kind of monies yeah. we spend. But, Joe, I want you to think about things like that in the defense budget, and let's come back and talk about that tomorrow. But I got to let you go so that I can go to the studio. But call back tomorrow, and we'll talk some more about this. All right, brother? Thanks, Egberto. Have a great day. You too, brother. All right, let's jump to the studio and then get out of here. Okay, I have nothing for you. Uh, Jack, what you got? You know, one of the purposes of government is to protect the people from corporate abuses. If the corporate entity takes over government, the corporate will be free to abuse and take more of your rights away from the people on the left, right, and center. Thank Those you, Jack. Rats. I got to jump to Neil. Neil, uh, give me a quick closer and tell us about your website real quick. 15 seconds. Great. Uh, be sure to follow the, the, the firefighters contract debate. Whitmire would just gut everything and the firefighters get it all. That's simplistic, but 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 it's but it's but there's an essence of there's truth to it. Your website. Houston HoustonDemocracyProject.com. Please visit the blog and and, and comment. Love you all. Thank you, Howard, Jack. Thank you, callers. Great calls. Thank you, chatters. Great chat. My name is Egberto. Oh, go to politicsandright.com slash newsletter for what we haven't covered that is in the newsletter today. My name is Egberto Willis. This is Politics and Right, and you guys know how I end this baby. I am what? Out. Up next.